Hi, everybody. Welcome to a new video for my YouTube channel. My name is Natalia Bonilla. I am a leadership and entrepreneurship mentor, a journalist, and producer in international affairs. And today, we will be discussing seven qualities stereotypically associated to feminine leadership. One of the questions that I often get asked is why focus on developing feminine leadership skills? This has a background <laughs> and I'm very excited to share with you this. Um, we have been in the past two years working on courses and classes to understand how hegemonic masculinity has been framing not only leadership at top executive level positions in entrepreneurship world or business worlds, but also in political spheres and political landscapes in the international arena. As a concept, power has been stereotypically associated since ancient Greece with this um, hegemonic masculinity mindset, which is though in order to execute power, one has to be um, given to competition, to aggressiveness, to looking for your own interests in front of the others is a very different kind of um, way of leading as well as behaving. It is also a, a way to diminish or ignore all the stereotypically aspects associated with ener feminine energy, all connected to inclusion, horizontality, or empathy or vulnerability are not considered aspects of power as this hegemonic masculinity concept. We see it since the beginning of the great man theory, which led to all the different styles of leadership that we see nowadays and throughout the 20th century, that the great man theory, that first beginning, that first origin was based on this construct of power. And this is very important because if we're seeking to shift that mindset and start working on an evolutionary way of addressing and approaching leadership, we need to incorporate feminine leadership skills and feminine leadership skills stereotypically associated with feminine energy. Often I get asked if feminine leadership is something that only women can do, and that's not the case. Feminine leadership is something that all people can engage in. And this is very important, regardless of sex, of gender, or race, or gender identity. So my invitation is to start working on your own perceptions on several qualities associated with masculine energy, or feminine energy and how to best um, aspect all of them. One of the things that inspired feminine leadership to take a leap in the past few years was the Athens Doctrine created by uh, John Gersema and Michael D'Alexandro. This was a study of uh, 66,000 66, people being surveyed all around the world on what will the future leader or the leader of the future uh, qualities be like. And they developed this map of, you know, qualities not stereotypically associated with any of these energies and allow people to choose what the future leader will look like. And most of them um, shows or picked um, feminine qualities or stereotypically associated with the feminine energy, be it inclusion, horizontality, patience, as well as empathy and vulnerability. Some of these qualities which we will showcase nowadays. I will list down below in the description box some of the episodes we have recorded with the Womenhood and IR podcast for you to get acquainted with hegemonic masculinity, hegemonic femininity, which is also a concept as well as androcentric and gynocentric view of the world. But today we're going to be talking about these seven qualities and giving some honorable mentions to others um, because there's a long, long list. So the first one that I want to share with you is the quality of vulnerability. Lately, we have been learning more about the power of vulnerability due to the work of Brené Brown, this author in the United States who launched this famous TED Talk. 
vulnerability is the um, ability of one's person, regardless, once again, of their sex, their gender identity, etc., of being able to recognize what are your own limitations. And, you know, I cannot do everything today, so I can ask for help. Um, there's power in showing your humanity in understanding that you don't have all the answers to everything and that in a sense you do need help to get um, some you know projects at the work environment or at a political level or community level um, have success so is in a sense vulnerability actually brings people together to help you reach your goals so take it into consideration the second quality that I want to showcase today is the quality of empathy. We have been lately also been uh, bombarded by let's be empathic with one another and most during the pandemic, the COVID-19. But prior to this um, global phenomenon, we saw a lot of conversation, not only uh, due to the work of Jacinda Ardern, Prime Minister of New Zealand, who used empathy as specifically a, a target or um, an aspect to win the election and to become known in the political landscape of this uh, country, but also around the world. But we also see it in the work of Michelle Obama lately with her book and a post uh, documentary becoming and we will be showcasing some of these case studies in the playlist of Mujeres Lideres Alrededor del Mundo or with women leaders around the world so I invite you to check it out and empathy is the ability of one person to actually see and understand and feel the emotions and the thoughts process of other people around them seeing and feeling what other people are feeling as well. It is important to also uh, see a third quality associated with feminine leadership, which is deep listening. And this is one that often gets, you know, sidetracked or, you know, like sidelined because it's like we listen all the time. <laughs> it is important to understand that listening or deep listening is not only listening the words, but also the emotions and the tone of voice which we, with which they are being said. And there's more than meets the eye. And it's not about, you know, um, making this psychotherapy, therapeutical uh, line of thought of what the other person is thinking or feeling whenever you're listening to the other person, but seeing beyond the words what's the emotion behind it. Um, that actually makes us connect rather than being distracted by the phone or by um, different things happening all around the, 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 the specific conversation. The fourth quality that I invite you to also check out is the inclusiveness, is the ability to ask for and listen for other people's advice on a certain subject. This is connected also with the fifth um, quality, which is horizontality. This is connected because in the moment where we are leading, you know, top executive positions in uh, business worlds or as a startups founders or at the community or political level, one of the things that we often see is these hier hierarchical structures where we are often on the top listening to the bottom and trying to solve everybody's problems. What if you come down from that uh, dynamic and actually create connection and listen to one another through our shared humanity? These are two qualities that help us reach that point. This is also um, connected to the whole conversation of um, intuition as well as humility. These are honorable mentions that I want to add to this list because, you know, often we um, associate um, leadership with being on, on the top level, intimidating people <laughs> to get your point across and to have things happen at your own way, etc. But humility also teaches us that it's okay if you understand and if you allow yourself to, um, you know, put down the crown in a sense and listen to one another. You're not going to lose power because of you doing that. You know, it's about how can we through 
circles, which is a way that we can decentralize the hierarchy and something that we find with the women's circles and the women's world is that we can engage in seeing one another as mirrors of a specific experience. And instead of trying to tell each other you're right or I'm wrong, we are actually um, sitting down on the same table, eating the same dinner, you know, connecting to what binds us together and understanding what separates us as well. Um, humility as well as inclusiveness and as well as horizontality can be enriched by intersectional approaches. And nowadays with the whole conversation on, you know, unveiling systemic wounds on racism and all the different failings that we have found throughout the centuries um, in terms of race and gender, we can actually build bridges with these specific skills. Two other left skills that I want to share with you today, remember there are many more, <laughs> is patience. And this often gets um, confused or disregarded or maybe connected to passivity or passiveness. And I want to say it's not the same. You can be patient and, and patient about a certain um, project or the development of a certain uh, process, understanding that everything has a cycle and maybe rushing things or changing things too rapidly is not necessarily always a good idea. Things take time and it's okay to develop patience. In this nowadays world where everything's like running very fast, it's probably be like, Natalia, this is so hard for me to <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> Many of us are still struggling with patience, but this is a virtue and something that we can develop and not to be confused with passivity. Lastly, but not least, something that we can also develop as a feminine quality is the one uh, connected to generosity and resilience, but specifically generosity. The resilience, I'm gonna leave it as a bunnies. Resilience um, often gets tossed around as this word like, oh, you need to be resilient. <laughs> you're a survivor, you're resilient, etc. But actually resilience entails more, entails how is our relationship to change? Are we able to adapt to changes without you know, losing our minds or losing what grounds us? Or are we able to actually um, you know, do the other thing. So that's the invitation. Resilience is a virtue and also a quality that is often associated with feminine leadership. Intuition is a bonus that I will add, is often disregarded in business settings as well as political landscapes. And that's why I didn't put it on the list, but it should be. And I invite you to create your own list specific for you and for all the skills that you want to develop. Intuition is the ability of oneself to find wisdom, inner wisdom, and you know that, that voice in your head or in your soul that is telling you something's right or something's wrong, listen to it. Whenever you have the chance, listen to intuition. It is uh, often said that intuition is God's voice for us. So in a sense, um, either be it intuition in the mind, or those gut feelings that we often find, start listening to your body it has a lot of answers to give you. One final tip before we end this video, and I hope that you like it and subscribe to this YouTube channel once we finish this um, presentation, is to have very much self-compassion in the process of developing your feminine leadership skills. Why am I saying this? <laughs> Because often with my clients, one of the things that I found is that they're like always comparing themselves like, oh, Natalia, but how can I be empathic? Like, I want to, you know, develop this empathy as, you know, Jacinda Ardern or as Michelle Obama. And I'm not that, you know, I'm very antisocial. I'm very, you know, different way of uh, behaving. I have a different personality. It is okay. You know, um, there's not one fixed quality that embraces feminine leadership and you should understand what works best for you. I just give you a, one example. Jacinda Ardern, Prime Minister of New Zealand is often connected to empathy. She found power in empathy. 
but you find in Germany's chancellor, Angela Merkel, that she found power in patience as well as deep listening. So Merkel is not necessarily known because of her empathetic skills, but she feels into that bracket of feminine leadership because she employs other qualities associated stereotypically with this connection, with this um, type of um, energy development. So I hope that this guides you to figure out what works best for you. Everybody's different and it's okay to um, start in this process of decentralizing and what we consider this hegemonic conception of power and leadership. I hope that you like this video. Please subscribe on the YouTube button and we love to listen to your topics for newest videos. Thank you so much for tuning in and talk to you soon.